This is our second video when we're discussing per unit quantities with transformers. Before I begin the discussion today, let's do a quick recap. I know you're tired of listening to this, but that is good because I want it embedded in your systems that per unit quantities are defined as actual quantities over base quantities. The four electrical parameters we are interested in are voltage, current, power, and impedance. The transformer bases, if chosen correctly, can eliminate the turns ratio. This is what we saw in the last video. What I mean by correctly defining them is that you define the voltage and power parameters at basis in one circuit, and then you calculate this, the voltage and, and power parameters in the uh, other circuits with the rule such that the voltage parameters are changed based on the turns ratio and the power parameters remain the same across all different circuits. Now that we have all of this in mind, let's get to our example for today and that will deepen our understanding of how we're using per unit quantities and, and how that makes life so much easier uh, when there are transformers in the circuit. So let us, um, let's say, okay, let's assume a two bus system here. So this is our bus one connected to a transformer. Let's put an impedance in series uh, on the secondary side. And this is our, our secondary bus. So that's our secondary bus there. That's our primary bus there. That's our transformer. That's our impedance. Let's say, so this is bus one. This is bus two. That's my current flowing there in secondary, current flowing in primary. As I showed you last time, this can basically be drawn out as something we are more familiar with. So let's draw that out. This is our voltage one. This is our primary circuit. This is our secondary circuit. In this case, I have an impedance here as well. So let me draw that. This is my secondary voltage. Secondary current, primary current. You have a turns ratio A here. And there you go. What are we given? We are given, let's say, okay, let's define voltage two is given to us as 20 volts. Let's even give the current here as two amps. And let's define our impedance as 10 ohms. So we given all the secondary characteristics, we have to find the primary voltage and the primary current. Okay, so as always, we will do this first using the traditional method. So let me let me change the color here. And uh, okay, so let's do this the traditional way. So traditional way is basically using these formulas right here, right? So we have to calculate voltage one. So we know voltage one is going to be nothing but A times voltage two um, or voltage in the, so okay, let me, it won't be as simple as this here because we have this, this voltage drop across, across this resistor here, right? So what I mean to say by that is voltage on the primary is equal to vo voltage uh, turns ratio times voltage on the secondary, which implies voltage on the primary is nothing but voltage one A times, um, what is my voltage on the secondary? It is I two Z two plus voltage two. So that's what we need to be careful about here. Okay. That's why I put this impedance here just to, just to remind you that we need to take care of of the voltage drop if there is any big and there would be let's say assuming this is a real transmission line then that would have some voltage drop there right so we we account for that that using using this method one thing i forgot to give you here 
is the turns ratio. So let's say the turns ratio is also defined as A is equal to 2. Okay. So now that we have all this information, this implies my voltage 1 is going to be 2 times I2 is 2 times Z2 is 10 plus voltage is 20 that's 20 40 that is 80 volts and my i primary is equal to i secondary over a so i1 is equal to uh, what is i secondary is just i2 2 amps over 2 so that is equal to 1 amp so that is what I get using the traditional method and of course in this case because it is just one transformer it is easier it is very simple to do do this using the traditional method but as I've spoken about earlier just imagine if you have a much more complex circuit you have many transformers many different voltage levels if you have to account for this turns ratio everywhere it's going to be a nightmare so let's try doing this using the per unit method now okay so let's do this using the per unit method the first thing we need to do using the per unit method before i even start defining bases is i'd like to redraw this what i mentioned last time is we can get rid of this transformer right and that's what i, I was discussing about in my recap as well so we can get rid of this transformer as long as we define the basis correctly so let's assume we've defined the basis correctly. So what would that look without the transformer? This circuit is just going to be, there's no transformer. So I have a voltage source here, V2. And I have a voltage here, V1. Without the transformer, this circuit is gonna look just like this, right? This is of course in per unit now everything because this circuit is is valid only in the per unit world because that's what we've said right we've said that as long as we're defining all the values in per unit we can get rid of the transformer so in here my i1 per unit is equal to i2 per unit and that circuit is is simple right there so now you will start to understand how this is so powerful and how this is so important a method but okay so coming back now to solving this using the per unit so the first thing we always do with per unit is we define the basis all right so let's define our voltage one base let it be 200 volts let us define the s1 base as being 100 volt amp let's say so what this gives me we know that as as long as we have two of these quantities defined we can calculate our other two quantities which would give us so this would be nothing but s1 base or uh, sorry v1 base here which would give me 0.5 amps and my z1 base would be nothing but v1 base times i1 base which would be 100 ohms correct let us go to step two which is that we're going to calculate the remaining bases so our now here comes what we learned from last time Voltage 2 base is nothing but voltage 1 base. So if we go back here, let me just scroll back up here. Give me a second. Coming back here, voltage 2 would be voltage 1 over the turns ratio, right? So voltage 1 base over A, so that would give me 100 volts s2 base remember we said we'll define all the power bases across different circuits to be the same so that remains as 100 va 
what that gives us is my i2 base becomes 100 over 100 which gives me let me write that quantity the unit so that makes it a little bit clearer there's no confusion one app there my z2 base becomes one amp times 100 volts so that is once again 100 ohms all right my step three would be to calculate the per unit values for the known known quantities so we know voltage to bay voltage two as 20 let me see what did i define what did we what were we given we were given as 20 volts right so let's 20 volts and current is 2 amps okay so 20 volts which implies voltage 2 in per unit is actual over base actual over base is 100 that gives me 0.2 my current was 2 amps which implies this is going to be 2 amps over 1 amp which is 2 in per unit right and that's all I need to know okay no I was also sorry given the Z2 uh, the impedance value right what was the impedance value that we were given we were given 10 uh, 10 ohms so we were given 10 ohms which implies z2 in per unit is 10 over 100 here that's the base right so actual over base value which gives me 0.1 in terms of per unit our step 4 is going to be per unit for known uh, sorry for the unknown let me just write the unknown there um, so voltage one right voltage one per unit this is where the circuit becomes powerful now if you look at this we can just solve this circuit using kvl right so voltage one here in using KVL would be nothing but the voltage drop here across this resistor, across this impedance, plus this voltage two. Remember everything in per unit. So you have I2 per unit times Z2 per unit plus, plus V2 per unit which is nothing but 2 times 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 which will give me 0.4 from that circuit we also saw that i1 per unit is equal to i2 per unit because there is no transformer so that's what we get and this means I1 per unit is nothing but 2. Our last step is to calculate, um, to convert from uh, per unit to actual. So V1 is nothing but V1 per unit times V1 base. So V1 per unit was nothing but 0.4. Let's find out what our base was. Our base was 200 volts. So what do we get here? That is nothing but 80 volts. I1 is I1 per unit times I1 base, which is 2 times what was my I1 base was 0.5 so this gives me 1 amp let us compare this to what we got in our traditional method 80 volts and 1 amps 80 volts and 1 amps there you go so we clearly saw here how we can 
eliminate the transformer using the per unit, how simple the calculations become. Again, as I mentioned, yes, the traditional method was just two, three steps here because there was one transformer. But imagine multiple number of transformers, if you can break down that circuit into something like this, it makes life a lot easier. And therein lies the strength of the per unit method. And as always, I'd, I'd like to leave you with a sample problem. So let me write down the sample problem here. Solve this problem and uh, leave your comments below if you have any problems understanding it or whatever your answers are. I'd love to hear from you. So let's me draw that circuit for you. So we have a two bus system once again another impedance here and I'm going to give you your voltage is on the primary this time your current is 1ka your impedance on the secondary is 1 ohm and your turns ratio is 4 find out the secondary voltage and the current so this is your bus one with voltage one here this is your bus two with the secondary voltage here this is your impedance two this is your turns ratio this is i2 this is i1 and that is your sample problem have fun solving it as i mentioned leave your comments um, in the comment section below leave the answers if you have any problems understanding this material uh, let me know as well I will be wrapping up my per unit uh, quantity uh, series uh, with just one more final video that I'll be doing and I'll be talking about how uh, I'll be talking about a formula where we can get a new per unit value if your base is changed uh, so I'll discuss that next time and um, have fun. Take care.